Hello, and welcome to the Astro Vlog. Today, we're chasing comets. On March 27th, 2020, Comet Neowise was discovered by Neowise, the asteroid hunting afterlife of the Wild Field Infrared Survey Explorer WISE mission. And we get to photograph it. I live in Vancouver, BC, where astronomical dark only lasts for a few hours each night. Thankfully, the comet is in view from sunset right until sunrise. However, the most important part here is making sure that it's not cloudy. I started out preparing for this two-tailed mission by regularly watching the VanCam.ca Northview webcam and the Weather Network's cloud map. Those along with Starwalk were my go-to apps. This once-in-a-lifetime celestial event is something I know that I'm going to remember forever. So I wanted to see it with my girlfriend Alex. And the sky is looking very, very, very clear. So I wouldn't be surprised if we could see it right up there. That's where the comet's about to come out, maybe like 10, 15 more minutes, and then it'll be dark enough for us to see it. <laughs> you think I'll see it from my balcony? Um, from my roof? You could probably see it. After getting a quick taste for the comet at Queen Elizabeth Park and Burnaby Mountain, we made the time to go out somewhere with a darker sky. I'm quite familiar with the stargazing options nearby and decided to choose the Pitt Lake area for its north view. And just like that, we were off. Three shoots next. A neon gummy worm. Always. Alex's favorite. <laughs> we got Pit Lake and its mountains over there, which is where we'll be. I'm so excited. So, even if there's clothes. Ready? Yep. Hold it. Maybe. Picked up a spot over here, just kind of off the road, I'm thinking most of the traffic is over there. So I rented a big zoom lens for this one. Sony 200 to 600. Should be fun. This is the Skywatcher 5. Oh no. We forgot an attachment. The lens. And in this moment, I forgot. I felt like I had completely failed. Calling all this gear for nothing. Uh, I had no words. Thankfully, Luna Boons was there to help de-stress me. But I tested it out real quick just to see if it would work and it seems like it will, because the motors are strong enough. So I just have a small camera and lens instead of a telescope. Looks like the comet will start way over there. And then as the night goes on, it ends kind of right there. So I could even go a bit further this way. So this is going to be shot number one, and then shot number two will be with the Sky Watcher. We'll see how it goes. I have faith. Disappearing head. <laughs> That's Editing me. Some photos. Comets are just big objects made up of ice, rock, and dust. These objects orbit the sun, and as they slip closer to the sun, most comets heat up and start streaming two tails. One made of dust and gas, and an ion tail made of electrically charged gas molecules, or ions. They are estimating that there is about 13 million Olympic swimming pools of water in Comet Neowise. In a few more days, this giant ball of methane ammonia-filled rock and ice will continue its trajectory into the outer solar system and not be seen again for another 6,000 years. It makes me wonder, if this object were to make contact with a dry planet like Mars, could it potentially create the necessary conditions for life to exist? Anyways, after catching up on a bit of sleep, it was back to Google Earth to find some proper foreground to give this comet some perspective. I decided that the lions would be the best spot with a dark north facing view. So once again, Alex and I were off on a hike. It's pretty fun. It's it's really exciting because this comet's only around for a couple, couple weeks and then we'll never see it again. So. 
You excited for a hike? I don't know. <laughs> Let's go shoot ourselves a comet. All right. We're not super young. Just so it knows that we're here. <sighs> yeah. For you. Look at that view. It's so beautiful. Luna. And in that moment, close. It all felt worth it. Whew, that's a good view. <laughs> so the sun is just setting. Go away, clouds. Go. Got camera one here. Getting a shot of Baker and the city lights turning on. And then I've got a second camera over here shooting the transition from day into night. So we've just gotten our comfy down, warm layers on, ready for an evening of chasing the stars. We got a first star alert right there. Hoping the comet, it's probably gonna be up here but I'm hoping it's closer to there. I just had a Rick and Morty thought as I looked at the city. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of power we're generating. Like, huh, wonder if we're someone's car battery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling out the loom cube here, which we use to light ourselves in photos. We've got some very, very exciting news. The comet is out! Woohoo! Oh, really exciting. Comet's out. Um, everything I planned is working out. We lined it up with the comet right beside the lions. And I think it might go low enough. It's really hard to tell what elevations you're at on the internet, but I think it's gonna work. So it looks like it's actually hitting its lowest point right above the lines, which will be at 1.30 a.m. Um, well, it looks like the clouds are lessening. And yeah, I'm really excited. This comet's beautiful. Chasing these astronomy images to the tops of mountains is a risk-filled endeavor. You spend days planning and preparing, constantly checking the weather with the hopes that after all of the hiking, heavy backpacks and mosquito bites, the clouds will hold off long enough to capture this one moment. Cutest dog ever. Woo. Just about to end this time lapse, which started when we got here and ended now. Astro vlog out. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know in the comments what celestial target you want me to shoot next. And please subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you guys later.